everyone, I am Rebecca from Cheminets, and today we're gonna leave no dye behind. And we're gonna do this on some 100% Peruvian Highland Roving. This is Wool of the Andes Roving from Knit Picks. And I gotta untie this knot. We have 100 grams of this roving, and I am gonna lay it out here in this four inch deep full-size catering steam pan. Now, I am working on another video right now that is very, very pink. We're using a lot of pink dyes and we're mixing the dyes as we go with some vinegar. And so, because I want to use the containers I'm using to mix up other dyes for the project, we're gonna bring those leftovers over here and pour them onto the cold, dry yarn and we'll get whatever we get. So, this is some Berry Crush in water with vinegar. <laughs> and notice it's gonna spread a lot through the bottom. It is not going to sink in very fast. Normally you need to pre-soak roving for a while, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna get what we get with this one. And so here we have some Cabernet. Uh, we've got a lot of different pinks we're gonna play with today. And this also has acid in it. And so now, just to sort of help this water, and the color currently is gonna be patchy, but we're gonna be working on this and adding more color for a while today. And so things will soak in a little bit easier as time goes on. But you can see we're getting a lot more color on the bottom than the top right now. The color is very uneven but already things are starting to get a little more saturated, so that is good. And yeah, we'll be back and add more color and maybe more acid, maybe not, as time goes on. But what we're not gonna do right now is apply any heat. And that is because, well, there's like no liquid in here, so if I turned the stove on, we would burn the yarn or fiber, and so I don't wanna do that. Now, if you would like to learn more about any of the tools and equipment that I'm using in this video, I do have affiliate links in the video description to Knit Picks, Amazon, as well as non-affiliate links to like the dyes from Dharma Trading Company and things like that. Uh, you can find more information, again, down in the video description, but if you make a purchase after clicking on an affiliate link, I might earn a commission. And so, those are uh, my disclosures. Okay, my next step, well, I added, I'm going to add a tiny bit of vinegar to it because we don't have any vinegar in our roving yet. Here is some fluorescent fuchsia. Look at how bright she is. And the nice thing is it doesn't matter if our color coverage is even or what. We will just kind of keep layering on more and more color as we go. Now, the Cabernet does look a little bit brown. It'll absolutely be less brown as time goes on. And here's some deep magenta. What's funny is that I thought with this project I was going to be layering more and more color on the other yarn so that we were going to have lots of leftovers along the way. We do have leftovers because I mixed a lot of dye. Did I already say this is deep magenta? But <laughs> the other project finished a lot faster than I thought so I'm now just starting to sort of just go into the leftovers and pull things in here. So I did add a little bit more acid as well, but I do also want to come in and attempt to saturate more of our fiber, which you may notice is still quite dry. And to some extent these pinks will blend, but there are going to be some areas that will be more pastel, some a little less. The goal is to cover all the light patches if I can, but I don't know if that's possible. Now, as I'm pressing, I'm trying very hard to not rub. Very, very, very hard, but it's a lot harder as I get down here because there's a lot less liquid. So over time, we'll get more. So I'm bringing over some more of the Cabernet and focusing it down here a little bit. But it's also okay to just 
let things sit. I don't know how much stuff will strike right now. <laughs> um, some things may, but we'll just have to see. But maybe, maybe what I should do, because yeah, if I pour water over the top, you can see like there is some color in there, but there's a lot of color that is not yet in our fiber because pouring the water on just sort of moves things. So we have time. And again, there's no heat, so there's really nothing to worry about. I'm just sort of looking for areas that look, like right there, very, very dry. But the thing is, if you're dyeing your own roving and you have something that you dye and at the end there are some white patches in it, you can blend that out and just make some of the other areas a little more pastel. So unlike yarn where like one white spot might really frustrate you, a white spot in fiber is just more beauty that you have to play with. But anyway, I'm gonna let this sit another 10 minutes or so um, and we'll be back and forth as we continue to work on this. But this is really lovely. And actually at this point, I'll pop up an image of some crude swatches that I've done. And all the colors in this crude swatch that I've highlighted, I am not using the pink orchid. I wasn't using that at all in my dyeing project today. And the flamingo pink, I used up all of that on my other project, so none of that is coming into this roving. But just so you can get a feel, all these pinks that I'm playing with are quite different. Some of them lean a little bit more yellow, some lean a little bit more blue or a little bit more muted versus bright. And so it's fun. I don't know if I need or want more dye here. Uh, let me get some more water though. I love that I was going to grab some water and then I realized I have about five cups of some water I mixed the other day that started off as eight cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. And as I add this in, you can see that the dyes have very much not struck completely. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of liquid in there. Not only do we have a non superwash yarn here, but we have not applied any heat. Uh, I think if this roving was superwash, then some of these pigments would have struck more already. But we're gonna remedy this and start applying some heat. And I am gonna keep a very close eye on this because we don't want it to get too steam. Well, we want things to get like steamy, but we don't want it to get too bubbly. And so I'm going to keep a close eye. And once things are hot, uh, I will come and chat and we'll talk about how we're gonna deal with this. <laughs> After four minutes, we're getting a little bit steamy over here which is a good thing. But notice we're not seeing a lot of movement at the surface, it's really just the steam. And so I'm gonna bring over, that was the other pan that has yarn, not our roving. I'm gonna bring over some tin foil and trying to not get the dye on top of it. There we go. Um, to help trap in the steam. I'll just wipe that up. And while we do that, I'm going to reduce the heat to low and we're going to wait about 30 minutes uh, before coming back and checking in on the yarn. It has been about 30 minutes when we can see some pastel patches there. I didn't take the foil off all the way because I want to just check. There is a hint of some pink left in here. Okay, we've got some more brighter pinks down there. Uh, let's add some more acid. So the heat is on very, very low. So you can see that it's steamy, but things aren't that hot. But I think what I wanna do is we are gonna leave this on the low heat for another 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna turn off the heat and let the fiber cool here in the pan completely to give it a chance to absorb as many of those pinks as possible, but also so then we don't really manipulate the fiber at all while it is still hot. <laughs> so I'm going to cover her up and we'll wait another 30 minutes. Okay, here we go. Still super steamy. 
and turn off the heat. And as I said, we'll leave it in the pan. The question is, there's a hair of pink kind of throughout. Okay, I'm gonna leave it uncovered, I think, uh, because I could have left it covered and trapped the heat in longer, but I do want it to cool off with some speed, I suppose. So, uncovered it is. Uh, and yeah, once it's cool, then we'll chat as we wash. I've got the pan of roving up here. I think the colors are mostly clear, but before I add it into the dye, or dye bath, the rinse bath, I just added a little bit of dish soap and I'm dissolving that in there so that way I'm not hopefully gonna add any agitation. Now I'm gonna carefully pick up the fiber, press out a little water, hopefully this doesn't collapse into the sink, place the fiber into that bath below, dump that out. <laughs> Okay, now we can really try to focus a little bit on washing our fiber and hoping there's no bleeding. So I don't know how many pink tones we have in here. Certainly we have dark and light, and that is cool. And if I gently bring it to the side, I'm not really seeing any bleeding. And so that is wonderful. So I'm gonna gently lift this up. There's maybe a tiny hint of pink, but not, something that I consider to be a huge problem. Uh, and now I'm going to carefully and reminding myself I need to be gentle, I'm gonna refill this basin with water. Okay, here we go. Now, when doing this, do not rub the fiber. Uh, I think that that is the stage where you are the most likely to felt things. And in washing yarn, I think dyeing 100% wool yarn with Brit dye more synthetic. Trying to rinse that out, I felted that yarn. That is the most felted yarn I've ever had. I have never felted fiber so much I could not spin with it. Oh, we're looking good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is carefully take the fiber <laughs> and I am gonna go put this through my spin dryer and, um, to help remove the liquid. If you have a salad spinner, it's functionally like that. Um, and then I will be hanging it up to dry and we'll come back and take a look at it before I like fluff it or anything like that. Gently squeezing this so it's not dripping. Um, I suppose you could also lay it on a towel um, just like you might block something to try to remove some liquid, but I'd worry a little bit more about agitation there. So that's why I go straight for the spin dryer. Here is the roving before we fluffed it up or done anything. So there are areas that are slightly more compressed, but actually this one is pretty fluffy on its own. There's some areas that were a little bit twisted when I hung it up, but if you have more twist, in the yarn, and especially if you have it, say, I dye, I dye roving a lot in braids. And so then when you undo that, it does end up being a little more compressed. But this is quite fluffy and soft and very, very workable and draftable. We got really good coverage through the dyeing process. There are a handful of some white patches. Like right here, this one is a surprising one. I wonder if there was like an air bubble or this was just did not pick up color. There's one there, and there's another one right here. Now, unlike some other forms of dyeing, I don't feel a need to go back in and add color here because when you're spinning and you draft this area, it will blend through the drafting process with the colors that are on either side. And so then it'll be more like one of the pastel pink kind of areas. So a small little dot of white that might be more of an annoyance in a skein of yarn because someone may want to cut around it. It's not an annoyance when it comes to your roving because it'll just work into the skein. And then especially if you're doing a multiple ply yarn, it'll get blended in even further and so I doubt you'd be able to pick it out in the end. This is interesting. We have some super dark patches as well, likely from 
when pouring on dye, some of it might settle more towards the bottom, if, especially when the roving was floating, and so we ha might have areas of more saturation. And so even though we used so many different colors, imagine how this would become a lovely tonal pink yarn. Because if you were going to chain ply it, for example, uh, spinning a single of these colors and then going back on itself, you would get all these shifts and tones all over and it could, depending on how it's spun, and could feel more variegated and a little busy, but also it could feel like it has like a lot of dimension to it as well. And so there's a lot of options when spinning something like this. And I don't know, I mean, part of me, I'm gonna list it in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, but part of me does wanna spin it myself because I just love all of the dimension in here. And I know I need to do more roving dyeing projects and something like this just inspires me. Probably also because with like a leave no dye behind mindset, I'm just going for it and letting the colors speak to me. And sometimes I really overthink things and then it leads to self doubt and all kinds of things because I like to try to plan different types of dyeing projects, right? And so I like to try to think of something, okay, what might something be that I haven't done before? But with, you know, almost 500 episodes of Dye Pop Weekly and thousands of videos total here on the channel, I think, probably, between like live streams and everything else, I mean, that's just a lot of different dyeing projects that I've done. And so, yeah, I just would never want to be repetitive. I just never want to be repetitive or anything. So if there's a video you would really like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. And of course, subscribe and do all that jazz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.